Ladies and gentlemen, with Jesus joy, all the way from the city of Benin, receive Abuja, the Willows! celebrating Jesus I think you can do that better <laughs> hallelujah the one for Jesus is now short come on celebrate Jesus <laughs> amen I want to celebrate my brother and my friend for having us in Abuja again and your beautiful wife Thank you so much. Thanks for the hospitality. Thanks for everything. Hallelujah. We are still dragging issue of who is the spiritual father and son. We'll, we'll settle that later. Pastor Philip, I appreciate you. Thank you for that powerful sermon. Hallelujah. I, I, I think you were talking to me because there's a step I need to take. Yes, you were talking to me. That sermon was for me. Hallelujah. Please celebrate my beautiful wife. You can have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. They told us marriage will be fun, enjoyable, and a bed of roses. And so we had our hopes high, had our dreams about marriage and life afterwards. Like, attention. They told me there will be good food. A change in status to Mrs. Willow. Of course, they said sex. And then we got married. And, and it seems, seems as, as if everything, everything just got turned upside, upside down. down. Because they never told us these things about marriage. These three things about marriage. They never told us that marriage involves responsibility. responsibility. Somebody say responsibility. responsibility. So apparently, before I got married to my wife, I used to hang out a lot with my, with my friends. You know, when I hang out with my friends, I usually will come home 11, 12 at night. And I wasn't accountable to anybody. If you come to my house, you realize that I can eat and keep my plates in the kitchen wherever the Spirit of God leads me to wash. That is when I will wash my plates. But the moment I got married, I realized that I needed to be responsible. And yeah. that cost us a lot of problems. A lot. It might sound funny, but it was a lot. Because many times, people just think that getting married to the right spouse is what ends or what brings about the success of your marriage. True. And you don't understand that even whilst you choose the right spouse, if you don't live with the right principles with the right spouse, you end up frustrated. True. And one of the things you need to deal with in living with the right person, because even though you have chosen right, doesn't end with just choosing right, is responsibility. Mm. No farmer just chooses a land without farming or cultivating it. True. And it takes a responsible farmer to grow a very, very thriving farm. Mm. The same thing with marriage. A lot of responsibilities are in marriage, and people shy away from responsibilities. Or there is one gender who thinks that they are inferior or superior to the other gender, and feel that this work is for the woman and this work is for the man. Mm. But they do not realize that if the male and female come together, they will achieve a lot more. Because it takes unity to bring to get more. Because she's trying to talk to me. I'm now. trying to talk to him. <laughs> because this was one of the problems we had. So in other words, given his instance, he talked about, you know, when he eats, the spirit leads him and he forgets that somebody has to take care of the hygiene or the neatness of the home. So my husband can eat anywhere and leave things up and down scattered and just feel that maybe the Holy Spirit will arrange it. And he didn't know that these things were beginning to cause us a lot of problems. As simple or as, as little, you know, it's the little things that actually cause issues in marriage. Yeah. It's not the big things. You know, and then he will leave the things. He will put plates down because scripture says that the woman should wash the plates. <laughs> so there was no assistant on this part. You see, sometimes some men leave the domestic chores of the home to the wife. 
And so we, some men say that, ah, they don't assist because they are not domestic, but many times they do not also want you to get a house help. Mm. They say, no, I don't need house help, but they don't also assist mm. because they think that the domestic child is left for the woman alone. Mm. Yeah, while she may do it better, doesn't mean you can't assist her because it takes two to make more. That's true. You know, it takes two for sustainability. You know, so these are the things that we have to deal with. What about the school run issue? So one day I was, uh, many years ago, when uh, my daughter just started school, you know, um, I needed my wife to, my wife came to, <laughs> may God help us. <laughs> my wife needed me to take my child to school for the school run, to start the school run. You know, my, wife just started, my daughter just started school. And because of my kind of schedule, when we just, or it has been a pattern of my life before I got married, um, I usually study at night, pray at night, work at night. Then I usually sleep from five, six in the morning. So I'm not um, uh, till like 9 a.m., you know, you know. So now I needed to start school on, and I told my wife that I would not be able to take our child to school. You know, my kind of uh, uh, life and all those stuff. Just find a way around it. And we had a car, and she has refused to learn how to drive the car. And so I just told her, just, at that just time. At, at that time. So just find a way around it. So the first time she complained, she went to school. She was angry, the second time angry, the third time angry, you know, I, I did not care, you know, the, at the time I realized that she was doing this sweatlessly and she was beginning to enjoy it and she would come back and say, sweet, I just took um, our daughter to school, man, I enjoyed it, <laughs> guess what, I said, what is this, oh God, you know, there's this guy, you know, <laughs> you know, um, anytime we just come out of the compound, the guy just park, he picks me, you know, AC tight car, you know, he takes us to school and drop us, you know. I and said, I was enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> she said it the first time, oh. she came again, she said it again, wow, man, this guy again picked me. I said, oh, okay. The third time she said, again, this guy, she picked me. My brothers and sisters. The next morning when I woke up, I took the car keys and I said, sweet, enter the car and we need to take you to school. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I know some of you say that is jealousy. But you see, a lot of men, they've lost their own because they are not responsible. There's a difference between jealousy and responsibility. True. So a lot of us have lost our own because we are not responding to the ability that we have responsibility True. so every one of us have a unique ability that god has given to us to make our own work mm -hmm. but we are not responsible to that ability True. so we just live an i don't care attitude and we lose out on that which god has gifted us as a spouse true and then me too when we just got married i used to feel like because my husband is a man of god he doesn't really need sex you know there's actually no need to you know i just he's a man of god he's praying la black la la holy ghost <laughs> holy ghost so this is my man of god there's no need he's a man of god every time he looks up to heaven the spirit the has, spirit done, has it. done it so <laughs> I didn't think that it was, sex was a necessity. You know, it's one thing for you to read books consigning marriage, another thing for you to leave the books you have read. Mm. So I didn't think sex was, I, used to say, I know that I've heard that, you know, men are driven by what they see, uh, but like this one is a pastor, dead by God. Mm. So there's no need for that. But I didn't know that I was failing in that area. I didn't know I was failing in that area. I didn't know that this man, you know, he, was just looking at a wife. You know how you have a wife, but it looks like I'm the wife, but he sees a dummy. You know that thing mm. that they hand clothes on, as in nothing is happening. the fact that I'm a man of God, yes. I was first a man. Yes, he was first a man the before man the of man of God. So, and that sex is very important. I is it now? <laughs> and the way God created man, 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 not man, woman, <laughs> is that we need sex. Men, are we together on this page? Okay, Abuja men don't need sex. Amen? That we need sex and our wife must satisfy us. And that is how God created us. But unfortunately, many women usually play with that aspect. 
heads. Christian women. Christian women, you know, you just lift up holy hands and do the devotion and give a lot of excuses why you should not meet the needs of your spouse. True. And if you are not careful, you realize that you now release them to that Jezebel that you are binding outside. It's true, very true. So it's very important that we think and think about our abilities, what we are able to do so we can respond quickly to it. Because lack of sensitivity has made a lot of marriages fail. Sensitivity has made a lot of marriages fail. And it's when you're sensitive to the responsibilities that you have, that's when you can have a fulfilled marriage. True. Amen. What marriage did not tell us is that marriage will complete it's you. you. <laughs> Yeah, true. Um, I've met quite a number of singles who feel that until they get married, they are not complete. Until they get married, they are not complete. And scripture says, the Bible says in Colossians 2 verse 10, it says, And ye are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. I need to say it again. And ye are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. So, I was only told in mathematics that it takes half plus half equals to one. So it's fractions that, it's, it's, it's half plus half that is equals to one. So it means that it is fractions that brings about equals to one. Mm. It's not two half human beings. There's nothing like two half human beings. Huh? So it has to be a fraction. It has to be a thing, not a being. So a lot of people are coming into marriage, they're trying to make a marriage or make their spouse, they're trying to find completion in marriage, thinking that they are incomplete. See, it doesn't matter where you come from, whether you're from a broken home, whether you were abused or not, the crisis doesn't make you incomplete in him. Your crisis, what you go through, don't make him incomplete. It's your crisis that draws you to the one who has already completed you from the That's very true. beginning. So it says, and ye are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. Listen, what the scripture spoke to us, or what spoke, spoke to me about, is that your spouse does not have all the knowledge or all the wisdom to guide you. Mm. Your spouse does not have all the wisdom to protect you. So when you come into marriage, looking for protection in a spouse, whilst it's a responsibility of a husband to protect his wife, he doesn't have all the wisdom to protect you. So in other words, you have to go to the head of the one that hates him. Mm. You have to go to the, the head of the world who hates him. So if by yourself you have not found that you are already complete in him, if by yourself you have not been able to wear the ID card in him, in other words, you will be looking for power in your husband or in the spouse that doesn't have all powers. It says you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. So when attacks come, you will be running to your spouse rather than running to God. Mm. So in other words, whether you are a wife or not, I hear some women say, um, you know what, my husband is the spiritual head of the home. It's true, but where there is a vacancy, what happens? True. You don't look at vacancy in the home where there is a spiritual vacuum or spiritual vacancy. Mm. Your duty is to fill it and not wait for one because salvation is personal. True. So you must understand your identity so you don't come into your a marriage confusing it. And that's why you have too many insecure people because when you understand that you're completing him, you are not coming to marriage feeling insecure. The same thing with some people who say marriage is a cure to loneliness. Please, I beg you. Marriage is not a hospital, so you're not going to marriage looking for treatment. Mm. Because marriage does not cure no one's loneliness. That's true. Scripture says, it says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone, not should be lonely. There are two mm. different things. Mm. Alone is a physical state. Psycholo alone is a physical state. Loneliness is a feeling of the heart. Mm. So one is psychological, one is physical. So you can be married and still be lonely. Why? Because it's not the presence of a being that makes you lack loneliness or makes or fulfills loneliness. It's that you can be with someone around you, but you still feel lonely because it's a feeling. When you have this understanding, you don't wake up in the morning and say, I feel like getting married. You wake up saying, I need to get married. Mm. Because you're not lonely, you're alone. True. I don't know if you understand the difference here. Yeah. So you need to get this thing so that you don't go into marriage looking for marriage to complete you. And that's why you, when you're walking on the road in Abuja, somebody stops you and says, or somebody says hi, and then somehow, somehow, because you have hormones, and you start having feelings, start crushing on the person, you rush into a crush that will crush you, because it doesn't just end in who you are crushing on. Beyond the crush, what have you researched on about the person? So when I was getting married to my wife, I expected that she was going to make me happy. Mm -hmm. And she thought I was going to make her happy <laughs> all the days of our life. 
But our career actually started from honeymoon. Honeymoon. I mean, honeymoon. I, we can't forget it. It's not a geez, uh, we're at redemption camp. Yes. We went to go pray to believe God for our union. <laughs> at, at that point, it has started. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you're not happy for yourself, you will never find happiness in marriage. True. You must be happy because your wife will not always make you happy or your spouse will not always make you happy at mm. every time. True. It is the joy of the Lord that is your strength. Mm. Not the joy of Mr. Emeka. Not the joy of your babe or your sweetheart. It's the joy of the Lord. Mm. So you must find joy in God. True. One Sunday morning, I woke up and I was about going to church. You know, we are pastors. So I was about going to church to go preach. You know, so while I was trying to get my clothes, I realized that I found money. I mean, a bunch of money. I just forgot this money. And I was broke. I just found this money. I mean, good money. It was a bunch. I just checked it. I said, wow, this money is huge. So my wife saw it. I was like, wow, honey, where did you get it? I said, I don't know. I just found it. She said, okay, let me keep it for you. So I gave it to her and she kept it for me. <laughs> Amen? And I'd already made up my mind that I was going to spend this money. I'd already planned what I was going to spend this money for. So I got to church and I started preaching. You know, you know, one of these days, you know, those of us that are pastors, you know, when you, when you are preaching a good sermon, you know you are preaching a good sermon. I mean, this sermon was good. <laughs> this sermon was good. I was preaching. I mean, I was preaching fire everywhere. You know? And people started getting up from their seat to come drop seed on the altar. They would just come, just drop seed. I mean, the fire was hot. And while I was preaching and preaching and preaching, and all of a sudden, my eye looked at my wife. She was praying in the Holy Ghost as well too. And she took her pause. <laughs> she took her pause. And she had that money and she was like, bah, bah, bah. I was on the altar. I didn't know how to stop because I'm the pastor. <laughs> I didn't know how to tell my wife. And it was like I was speaking of lay zoo, zoo, sweet, zoo, sweet. She didn't care. She was moved in the Holy Ghost. I said, sweet, sweet, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Stop it! They did not know when I was saying stop it. They thought I was talking to the devil. They did not. It was my wife. Stop it! Get deep! She went forward and she took the money and she dropped it on the other seat. She said, ha! Ah! I started shouting, ha! Ah! They thought I was chanting in the Holy Ghost. They didn't know I was feeling pain. After the sermon, I came down, I was angry. I said, so what's I said, man, so you preach good. And I, I didn't know when you, I didn't know when the sermon moved me for your money. I lost money. Listen, marriage will not always make you happy. It's for you to find joy peace and fulfillment in that one God has given to you. Just find a way to enjoy your home. If you enter into marriage, think it's going to make you happy all the days of your life, you lie. Yeah, true. It is God that is the third mm. party that brings that joy. Finally, they never told us that there is spiritual warfare in marriage. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture said that men ought always to pray and not to faint, there was a reason why he said it. He understood the fact that we are, we are a praying being. So he didn't say that, he wasn't advising you to pray. He was saying it is your nature, your DNA to always pray. Because even in marriage, you see reasons why you should pray. That is why as singles, we should start learning how to pray. Because there are battles. If you see everything that has been established in this conference so far is the fact that the devil is after the seed. The devil is after homes. And many a times when marriages fail, it's not necessarily because we were not so calculative. It may be that it is the orchestration of the devil to cause pain, affliction in that home. I usually tell people, don't be too quick to celebrate a man or a pastor or a minister who fell into immorality. It may not just be his ordinary eyes. It could be a battle from the kingdom of darkness over his destiny. Certain times, you do not just mock your husband and say, ah, look at him, useless man, a drunkard. It could be that there's a warfare over his life and his destiny. 
So when you enter into marriage, thinking that it's going to be all, all about shawarma, I love you, you love me. Ladies and gentlemen, there is war, There's war. in true, marriage. True, Because you see, in marriage, before you even got married, there are prophecies that have been over your head. True. And the devil is doing all he can to stop the prophecy from getting into fulfillment. Mm. And sometimes it brings different kinds of war that are being entertained by you unknowingly. Mm. You don't understand that the attack is not ordinary. You don't understand that what's going on in your home is not ordinary. And then you use your ordinary eyes, not understanding that you need to apply an extra court prayer. Mm. So you are looking and say, ah, I beg you, forget him, forget that. You see, the rate of divorce is getting very high. You know why? Because a lot of persons are just separating by just little things. Some people don't even wait for the abuse anymore. Just little things. I beg you, talk to me. Like, before you know it is magnified. Before you know it, homes are scattering. Why? Because the devil is busy looking for an idol wife. An idol husband so that he can penetrate. And you, you are there in your idleness entertaining the devil's attack. People don't understand that in the world where we are, the life, of, the life that we are living is a life that is a battlefield. Mm. And so therefore, you cannot afford to live this life ordinarily. Mm. You can't afford to live this life just physically. They, because the world you are living is a spiritual, spiritual world. And so therefore, you must apply some spiritual principles to live it. But many persons are silent because ah, it's just normal. You normalize everything. A little sickness happens, you normalize it. But you don't understand that it's a warfare in the spiritual realm. And you need to wage a warfare. So I appreciate the fact that we were into prayers before we got mm. married. For the first one, one year plus that we're dating, myself and my wife, we wake up every Friday night to have our vigil. You know, we started praying. We were just praying. It was part of what we do. We did not know what we were going to face in marriage. So when we got married, myself and my wife sat down. We entered into a covenant. I would say, Father, make our marriage a role model. The moment we made that covenant, we did not know that hell has gotten loose. And they were ready to make sure that that word fall to the ground. Have you ever made prophecies? Have you ever made declarations concerning your life? And say, this is what I want my life and my destiny to be. And you now realize that from the day you made it, from the day that pastor laid down on your head, True. and he said you are going places, that is when you started going nowhere. It is True. because devil, <laughs> the kingdom of darkness had let loose and they vowed. The way they vowed over Peter and they said they would never see him under that testimony but listen we began to pray we entered into marriage and the warfare came six months into marriage robbers had come they stole in on our equipment that we used to do our skits a year after they came they stole our equipment a pastor came to our church and was preaching and said i was attacking me by a sermon in my own church and he said <laughs> and he said it's because you do not pay tithes that is why this infirmity has come upon your life Maybe it's because you are sleeping with the girls in church. That is why the infirmity has come upon your life. Maybe you have stolen God's money. That is why the infirmity has come upon your life. I was on the seat. I was weeping. Tears was dropping my eyes. The man thought he was touching me by the sermon. He didn't know I was looking at my life. I said, God, why have you brought this shame upon my head? What have I done wrong? I am not even paying tight of 10%. I have given my all to the kingdom. And yet, the affliction is so intense. That we could not even pay house rent anymore i wish i went back to do business because when i was doing business i made my first million when i was 25. but the day we made up our mind that we we're going to serve god it was like everything lost while we we're trying to manage ourselves again in that intense frustration in the period of trying to give birth to our second child we lost the child again and when we're losing the child, I was on my way to Sierra Leone for a mission trip to do God's work. I was already in Lagos when my wife called me and said, Sweet, we lost the child. I had to go back to Benin, bury this my daughter. And I went back, entered the plane, went to Sierra Leone to go and do God's work while I was losing at my own end. What it takes to serve God. But Apostle Paul says something, say hi a bold servant that this work we are in there is no looking back we are going to tell the devil that no matter what i have lost there is no looking back true 
some of you, I do not know what you have lost. Nice. Yours may just be a boyfriend. Mm. I want to commit suicide for boyfriend. I do not know what you have lost. Maybe you were raped and there was shame, reproach over your head. But listen, we tell the devil, no to your vices. Mm. We are not going to leave our Jesus. We are going to stand by him no matter what. True. But listen, men ought always to pray and not to faint. He went to meet his disciples in Gethsemane. They were sleeping. sleeping. He said, why can't you wait for one hour? Sure. Because he knew an hour will come. Where you be tested. Where they will be tested. Where this suffering will be so real. Mm. But if you are not a man or a woman of prayer, you'll be a victim of the narration from the kingdom of darkness. Mm. Sure. But that will not be your portion today. That will not be your portion today. Wherever you are, just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost.